In this short video, we're going to learn about equations of planes. So we can think about a plane as a geometric object. It's a flat two-dimensional surface which extends forever in all directions. So I can distinguish a plane by two things, its orientation or direction and its location. So to determine its orientation, we just need a vector which is perpendicular or orthogonal to the plane. And what that means is that any vector whose head and tail lies in the plane would be orthogonal to this normal vector n. And then of course we need a point on the plane to fix it in a particular location. So our normal vector determines the orientation and the fixed point determines its position. So let's see how we can get a vector equation. So the idea is we're going to take our fixed point p and then we're going to take just some general point Q. General meaning that we don't have specific coordinates. Its coordinates are just some x, y, and z, which is on the plane. And we're going to call our vector r the position vector for the point Q. And we're going to call r not the position vector for our fixed point P. And so then the vector PQ, which is going to be the same as the vector R minus R naught, has to be perpendicular to the normal vector N. Which means that in parentheses, I'm not working here. Ah, there we go r minus r naught dotted with n would have to equal zero. And doing a little bit of algebra dotting, I can distribute the dot product and then bring r naught dotted with n to the right hand side. Then I get r dotted with n equals r naught dotted with n. And that's what we call the vector equation of the plane. Now, that may not always be the most convenient way to think about the equation of the plane. So there's a couple of other forms that are based on this vector equation. Remembering that uh, R has components just X, Y, and Z. R naught has my fixed numbers, X naught, Y naught, and Z naught. And let's call the components of the normal vector A, b and c. So if I substitute those into my vector equation, n dotted with r would give me ax plus by plus cz, and n dotted with r naught would give me a times x naught plus b times y naught plus c times z naught. So I could leave it this way, but I'm going to bring all of the terms onto the left-hand side and factor out the A, the B, and the C. And that gives me what we call the scalar equation of the plane. Now, if I went back to what I had after taking the dot product, and if I just call that term which is just a constant. Remember, x naught, y naught, and z naught are numbers. A, b, and c are numbers. So their dot product is just going to be some number. And I'm just going to call that number d. Then I can write the equation as ax plus by plus cz equals d, which is what we call the linear equation of the plane. And frankly, this is the most common form that we see. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's find an equation of the plane passing through three points. 
Now these three points can't be all on the same line and they're not. And so what's our strategy here? Well, remember, how do we determine the equation of a plane? I need to know the normal vector and I need a point on the plane. Well, the point on the plane, there's no work involved. We're given three of them. So we can just pick any one of them. But finding the normal vector, we need a little bit of strategy. So what we're gonna do is first find two vectors which are in the plane. And remember, when we say a vector is in the plane, that means the head and the tail have to be points which are in the plane. Really, we could say that a vector which is parallel to the plane. And then we'll take the cross product of those two vectors because the cross product then will give us a new vector which is orthogonal to the two vectors which are in the plane, which means it's going to be orthogonal to every vector in the plane. And so then we could just choose any vector parallel to that cross product as a normal vector. So see, we have some choices here. So the equation uh, that we come up with does, is not going to be unique. We could use any three, uh, any of these three points, or in fact, if we found some other points on the plane, we could use any of those. We could use the midpoint, for example, between P and Q, because the line segment between P and Q has to be in the plane. So any point on that line segment would also be another point. So we really have an infinite number of choices um, uh, for uh, our P, our, I'm sorry, our point on the plane. And we also have an infinite number of choices for the normal vector, because we could choose any vector which is parallel to this cross product. So we could take that cross product and multiply that vector by any const, non-zero constant and that would give us a normal vector. So let's go ahead and uh, calculate. Uh, I need to only get two vectors. So I'm going to use PQ. Remember how I find these components? I take the 3 minus the 2, the 2 minus the 1, and then the negative 1 minus 0. And then I'm going to use PR. I could have used QR. I could have used, um, let's see here, I guess those are the only three, PQ, QR, PR, and their opposites. I could have used RP or RQ, but I used PR. So again, how do I get PR? I get two minus two gives me zero, two minus one for the uh, middle component, and then one minus zero. So let's calculate their cross product. We'll use our memory aid here, this determinant-like form. And I get the vector two comma negative one comma one. Now remember, we wanna do a quick mental check to make sure this cross product is indeed orthogonal to the original two vectors. And sure enough, if I take two negative one, one and dot it with one, one, negative one, I'll have two minus one, minus one, which equals zero. And then if I take two, negative one, one, and dot it with a zero, one, and one, I'll get zero minus one plus one, which equals zero. So now we have confidence that our cross product is correct. So I could choose any vector parallel to that cross product as my uh, normal vector. I don't see any advantage to taking anything different from that vector. So I'm just going to choose my normal vector to be the same as the cross product. And I'll just use uh, for R naught, I'll use uh, uh, the position vector for the point P. And so uh, I'd like to write a scalar equation. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate N dotted with R naught. And so then using n dot R equals n dot R naught, I'll get 2x minus y plus z equals 3. So I guess, you know, a good question here 
would be, would I get a different value besides three if I had chosen the position vector for Q or the position vector for R? Let's just check that real quick. So if I look at um, N dotted with say OQ, that would be what two comma negative one comma one dotted with, uh, well OQ would be three comma two comma negative one. And that would give me, well, six minus two minus one. Six minus two minus one equals three. Okay. And then uh, if I take N and dot it with OR, it looks like I should get the same value, three. So two comma negative one comma one dotted with OR two comma two comma one. That gives me four, four minus two plus one equals three. All right, so good. So the only thing that would change my equation is not the fixed point, but what I had chosen as my normal vector. So here I chose the normal vector to be just the cross product, but I could have chosen it as being you know, the opposite of the cross product. I could have chosen it as being two times the cross product. And so uh, that is going to give me, would give me a different equation. Now, of course, all it does is give me an equivalent equation, meaning that I would just be multiplying uh, the equation I found by some scale factor, multiply it by negative one or multiply it by two or by a half. So I would get what we call an equivalent equation, meaning that the solution set would be the same. And that makes sense. The solution set is every point on the plane and the plane doesn't change no matter how I write the equation. All right, so that was good exercise. Okay. All right, the angle between planes, uh, we can calculate the angle between planes uh, using the given fact that, and it just comes from some basic geometry. Um, if you have the normal vectors are n1 and n2, then the angle between the planes is going to be the angle between the normal vectors n1 and n2. Which tells us that if I want to know if two planes are parallel, I just need to check if their normal vectors are parallel, or if I want to check if the planes are orthogonal or perpendicular, uh, I would just check if the normal vectors are orthogonal. Uh, the angle between a plane and a line, we got to think about this a little bit more. Uh, so if I have a line L, which passes through a plane uh, at a particular point here, and I place the tail of the normal vector at that point, if I want to calculate the angle then between the plane, so this is my angle theta, and the line, well, I can calculate the uh, angle between the normal vector and the, uh, and the direction vector of the line. Um, and I have a mistake here. This is not the angle. Let me go ahead and update this. In fact, maybe what we should do is uh, Instead of, oops. Instead of putting that, let's just call that angle alpha. I'm going to call this angle between the normal vector and the 
uh, direction vector of the line alpha. And so uh, cosine of alpha is what I had written. It is the normal vector dotted with the direction vector over their lengths. So I want to calculate the, uh, and then it's just going to be the absolute value of, of 90 degrees or pi over two minus that angle. All right, so let's finish up with another example here. I have two planes and Again, this is our most common way of writing the uh, equation is this uh, linear form here. And uh, so I have x plus y plus z equals four, two x minus y plus two z equals five. And so uh, we'd like to find the angle between the planes to the nearest degree and find an equation of the line of intersection between the two planes. So. Uh, what's nice about this form of the equation that it's very easy to see what the normal vector is. The components of the normal vector are just the coefficients on x, y, and z. So my first normal vector has components 1, 1, 1. And then my second normal vector has components, well, what do we have here? We've got 2, then negative 1, then 2. And so to find the cosine, I'll just use our familiar formula, take the dot product, divide it by the length of each vector. And I'll go ahead and simplify that. So in order to find the exact value of theta, I'd have to take the inverse cosine of three over radical three. Uh, but we're just asked to find an approximation to the nearest degree. So I'll take out my calculator and I get about 54.736 degrees, which I'll round to 55 degrees. So once we found the normal vectors, it was just a straightforward application of our formula. Uh, to find the line or the equation of the line of intersection, um, there's more than one way of doing this, but we'd like to use vectors because that's what we're learning about. So let's see if we can find a strategy which makes use of vectors. Well, before I can think about vectors, so I'm thinking about how can I find the direction vector, I do know that I need a point on the line. And so I'll have to find that point on the line. And then we're going to find the direction vector of L by noting that the line L should be, meaning the direction vector of L, should be orthogonal to both N1 and to N2. Let's explore that a little bit more closely. So here I have a diagram. I have my two planes represented by the green plane and the white plane. My line of intersection is this red line L and the direction vector V is in the direction or parallel to the line L. So think about this, because L is contained within both planes, the vector V is contained within both planes. And since it's contained in the green plane, then N1 dotted with V must be zero and N2 dotted with V must be zero. That is, V is orthogonal to both N1 and N2. That's how we're going to find at least a vector which is, I can choose for V. Remember V is not unique. The direction vector for, for a line is not unique. We just need to find some vector which is parallel to the line. So let's go through and first find a point on the line. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna assume that the line L intersects the xy plane. And remember on the xy plane, z equals zero. So if I re replace z with zero in our two equations, 
then I'll get this system of equations that only has x and y. So from the first equation, I get x plus y plus 0 equals 4. And in the second equation, I would get 2x minus y plus 0 equals 5. So I can just write that as this system. And uh, very simple to solve. We don't need to go through the details. The solution is x equals 3 and y equals 1. So I know z equals 0. That's how I found that. So the point with coordinates 3, comma 1, comma 0 has to be on both planes, and uh, which means that it's on the line of intersection. And again, I can just double check, go back to the equation. If I replace uh, x, y, and z with these numbers, I would get 3 plus 1 plus 0. That equals 4. And then in the second equation, I would have 6 minus 1 plus 0. That equals 5. So definitely it is on both planes, that point. So it's got to be on the line of intersection. And so now I need to find uh, a vector which is orthogonal to both n1 and n2. Well, how do I find a vector orthogonal to two given vectors? I use the cross product. So let's go ahead and calculate the cross product. We'll use our memory aid here, this determinant form, and we'll find that we get the vector with components 3, 0, negative 3. So quick check, is that uh, orthogonal to 1, 1, 1? Sure enough, I would get 3 plus 0 minus 3. That's 0. And is it orthogonal to negative 1, 2? I would get 6 plus 0 minus 6, which equals 0. So good. So I can choose any vector which is parallel to this cross product as my direction vector. And so in this case, I can see that my components have a common factor of 3. So I'll factor that out and choose the vector 1, 0, negative 1 to be my v vector. So now I've got a point on the line. I've got a direction vector. I can just go ahead and use the corresponding position vector as my r0. Here is my vector v, and so here is the vector equation for our line of intersection. All right, and that's it for uh, our discussion of equations of lines. I hope you found this useful, and I'll try to post some um, more examples later in the week.